Now that we've covered what a one-to-one -one function is, now we can start covering what an inverse function is. These two are related. So it says if a function is one-to-one, -one, then it will have an inverse. The inverse of f of x is written as this notation right here. So the inverse of x. So example three says find the inverse of the following. Before we do that, I want to go over what the domain and range is of my function right here. So my domain, you have your squiggly fancy brackets. Your domain are all of your x coordinates here. So we have negative three, negative two, Negative one, zero, one, two, three. Okay, and I want to make it clear, you you cannot say negative three to three, because that would include all of these little numbers in between, but we don't have those numbers in, in between. It is these seven numbers and these seven numbers only. So if you again put uh, like bracket negative three to three, then you're talking about 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, and so on. Okay, so we have to list these out individually. So then my range is now all of my y coordinates. So we have negative 27, negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, 8, and 27. Okay, so now let's find the inverse. And to find the inverse, what we need to do is simply switch x and y. So now, again, again, squiggly fancy brackets. This coordinate here, instead of being negative 3, negative 27, is now negative 27 negative three. Instead of negative two, negative eight, now it is negative eight, negative two, and then so on. These next three though, when you switch the x and y coordinate, because they're the same, they don't change. And now two, eight becomes eight, two, and three, 27 becomes 27, three. Okay, so now from this inverse, what is my domain and what is my range? Well, my domain, all of my x coordinates, so we have negative 27, negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, 8, 27. And then my range are all of my y coordinates. So negative 3 negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. And if you notice, and maybe you already had as we were writing these down, we started to repeat, right? The domain of my inverse was the range of my function. These two have the exact same. And then the range of my inverse was the domain of my function. They're the same. So the domain of my function is the range of my inverse. And the range of my function is the domain. of the inverse. So those are always going to switch because we're switching X and Y. Now the graph of a one-to-one -one function and the graph of its inverse function have a relationship when it comes to the graph. They are symmetric with respect to the line Y equals X. So that is also one of our key graphs where it has a y-intercept of zero and a slope of one. So it's just this perfectly diagonal line right through the origin. And so 
if you look at this graph right here and you kind of turn it sideways, if you were to fold along that y equals x, you could see that everything there would land on top of each other. So example four says the graph of a one-to-one -one function is given, draw the inverse, uh, draw the inverse function and for your convenience and as a hint, the graph of y equals x is also given. So we just have these four ordered pairs here and we see that line that we need to uh, reflect it over. So first thing I'm gonna do is just write all of my ordered pairs on my function. So we have negative two, negative two, zero, negative one, one, zero, and two, comma, one half. So now to find my inverse function and to plot it, all I'm going to do is switch my x and y. So negative two, negative two doesn't change since x and y are the same, but then this one here will become negative one, zero. This one becomes zero, one, and this one becomes one half comma two. So let's plot those. This one is right there on top of each other. Then we have negative one, zero, zero, one, and one half, two. And if we draw those as best as we can, that should look pretty darn symmetrical right there. 